All right. Now, in the Bible, Jesus said a lot of amazing things. Yeah? One of the most amazing things that Jesus said was, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. My question to all of you this evening is this. What would you pray for if you knew that is possible? What would you pray for if you knew and you believe that nothing is impossible with God and God would love nothing more than to answer your prayer? What would you pray for? I believe God has made all of us with a special purpose in this world. We're not here just to take up space. Maybe you don't think much of yourself. That's fine. But let me tell you right now that God thinks very highly of you, and you're not here to just take up space. God has a mission on earth for you to do. The problem that many of us have is that we are either too afraid we, we're afraid of failure. We believe it's not possible. You know, that might happen to some people, that have, but that's not possible with me. Or maybe you're, you're afraid of rejection. I don't know what it is, all right? But these are some of the things that hold us back from accomplishing what God wants us to do. Now, a few weeks ago, I came across this amazing TED Talks. How many of you love to hear TED Talks? TED Talks, if you don't know anything about it, is this technical talk about different subjects and usually an expert in the field would spend about 12 to 15 minutes talking about his subject of expertise. So at this particular TED Talk, there was this young man from, he used to grow up in China. When he was 14, he heard Bill Gates. Bill Gates was in China and he happened to hear him speak and he decided, I want to be like him. Where can you be like Bill Gates? In the United States, of course. So he decided, when he was 16 years old, to move to America to try his luck. And so he moved to America when he was 16. He got married eventually, and he wanted to start his own business. So he was really hopeful that he was going to get the funding for it. But then again, he came across rejection after rejection after rejection to the point that he was so devastated from all the rejections. That's what rejection can do to you, all right? But then he thought to himself, if I want to be successful in life, I cannot give up. I have to somehow overcome all these rejections. So he went, believe it or not, to what is now known as the rejection therapy. Have you been to a rejection therapy? And he decided... For 100 days straight, he's going to go to different places, ask different people for something so ridiculous that he would bound to be rejected. And he would go through that for 100 days. The thinking behind it is, if you can survive 100 days of rejection, you can survive anything, right? But then the strangest things started to happen. When you start asking people for ridiculous stuff, people started to say yes. I want you to watch this video and we'll see what happened to it. So I started going out and asking ask for some crazy stuff to get rejected. For example, I went to a burger joint. After eating, I said, can I get a burger refill instead of a drink refill? <laughs> and then one day I went to PetSmart and said, hey, can I get my hair trimmed like a, like a German Shepherd? <laughs> and this last weekend, I went to a random Super Bowl party saying, can I join you guys? I brought chips. And, and of course, I got rejected. But amazing things happened. I started getting yeses a lot more than I thought. And here are some of the yeses I got. One day, I tried to I knock on the stranger's door saying, can I play soccer in your backyard? He said, come on in. <laughs> I'm like, OK. And one day, I tracked down a police officer driving uh, his car and said, hey, can I pretend to be you and drive your car and sit there? And he's like, do it. All right, and then one day I was flying. Before my flight took off, I asked the flight attendant, saying, can I give the safety announcement instead of you? They're going to pay a lot more attention to me, trust me. And he said, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, of course, not everyone was happy. A couple pa passengers thought, is he a terrorist? You know, should I tackle him now? <laughs> but I was blown away by how kind the society was to me. I did not know that before. And then there's the donut. 
And here's what happened. Uh, I'm driving toward Krispy Kreme. I'm gonna ask them to make me some specialized donuts. And uh, we'll see what happened. What kind of specialized donuts are you talking about? I like to have a... Getting a... Uh, you link the five donuts together, make them look like Olympic symbols. When are you looking to these? Huh? When? Uh, the next uh, 15 minutes? Let me see what I can do. Okay. Try, but what do you think? Wow. That is really good. That is really good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, do I pay there? Don't even worry about that one's on me. Are you serious? Ditto. Are you serious? Very. Extremely. Wow. Extremely. Today. All right. Thank you. Very All right. Welcome. See you. Give me a hug. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. All right. Thank you. See Very you. Well. And so that was before donuts, and now it's after donuts. And her name's Jackie, by the way. I and mean, I was blown away by the customer service, but also just a human kindness she showed me. And a lot of people shared my feeling. That video um, got five million views in a span of two weeks. And, but the story did not stop at a viral video. People started following my blog and sending me emails after emails thanking me for doing this because they will share this fear of rejection. Okay, isn't that interesting? What is even more interesting about Jia Jiang's story, that's his name, is that he's actually a follower of Jesus Christ. He became a Christian because his host family, when he was 16, when he moved to America, is a Christian family. And in his words, he said this. Let me read it for you. My host family treated me so well. They treated me with love, the type of love that I don't think I've seen before. I knew love, love from parents to kids, family members, or friends to friends, but I did not know the type of love from strangers to stranger that they were showing me. I was a complete stranger to them, but they were just loving me, and they took me to their church, and the rest is history. And I want to make a tangible reminder of the fact that nothing is impossible with God. So I've decided that I'm going to call the local Krispy Kreme outlet here in Perth and I'm going to ask for 400 free donuts for our Christmas this Friday. How about that? I'm going to try this rejection therapy. So, you know, if I have to pay, I have to pay. Or maybe I get Pastor Mike to do it. You can try this rejection therapy, all right? So, no matter what, on Friday, the 25th, everyone will get Krispy Kreme donuts for free, all right? We're going to try. We'll see what happens. That's another incentive for you to come to church, all right? Uh, <laughs> Um, if Christmas reminds us of anything, it reminds us of this fact that nothing is impossible with God. So this evening, I thought rather than preaching a usual sermon, I'm going to read you two stories, two nothing is impossible with God stories. And I believe these stories will encourage you if it's, if it's possible with God doing all these wonderful things, it is also very possible for God to do amazing things in your life. And at the end of it, I want to give you an opportunity to be prayed for. What is my question to you again? Your nothing is impossible prayer. If God were to answer that prayer, what would be that prayer? And we will have someone standing here at the front. They would love to stand by you and pray one of those nothing is impossible prayers for you. All right? So let's on to the first story. In Luke chapter 1, starting verse 26, this is a very familiar Christmas story, and I want to read it for us. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Verse 29. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him 
Jesus. He will be very great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby, will be, will, so the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For, this is our phrase, for nothing is impossible with God. For nothing is impossible with God. Can you say to the person sitting next to you, look at them straight in the eye and say, for nothing is impossible with God. For nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that, church? Yeah? Nothing is impossible with God. How can God become man? It's possible because nothing is impossible with God. How can a virgin conceive? It's impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. How can the holy, God is the holy one, accept and mingle with all of us, the unholy ones? It is possible with God because nothing is impossible with God. Now, I want to tell you a second story about nothing is impossible. This story happens 30 years after the first Christmas story, after the birth of Jesus Christ. It's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Uh, there was a Samaritan woman. Picture with me first, okay? There was a Samaritan woman on a hot midday Palestine sun under the hot Palestine sun at about 12 o'clock, this Samaritan woman was walking toward a well. The reason why she was trying to draw water at 12 o'clock noon when all the women were drawing water early in the morning when it was still cool was because she wants to avoid people. You see, she was not very popular in her hometown. She's been married five times. She's been divorced five times. She was shunned by the society. Nobody liked her. As he approached the well, she saw this Jewish rabbi. She could tell by the way he, he was dressed. And he, she thought to herself, I know exactly what's going to happen. Because it happened many times before. This Jewish rabbi is going to off. Is gonna take off as soon as he sees her. Because no Jewish man wanted to be associated with a Samaritan, let alone a woman. So immediately... She has two strikes against her. She's a woman and she is Samaritan. And Jewish rabbi, they don't talk to a Samaritan woman. But the strangest thing happened. With God, anything is possible. As she approached the well, not only did this Jewish rabbi did not withdraw himself, this Jewish rabbi even looked at her, smiling toward her. And this Jewish rabbi looked at her with the look of acceptance, the look of love, the look of peace that penetrates through her, that she never experienced from anybody before. That kind of acceptance, that kind of like, you are okay with me. So she thought, ah. she just started to approach the well and starting to draw water. And then the strangest thing happened. Not only did the Jewish rabbi did not go away, she, he started talking to her. And in verse 7 of John 4, we read, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her. Now, this never happened before, all right? Like I told you before, Jewish men, they don't talk to a Samaritan person, let alone a woman, but this Jewish rabbi named Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. And in verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For, this is what I said, Jews do not associate with Samaritans. It's like the Krispy Kreme Olympics donut ring 
requests, you know, multiplied by a million times. You know, if you were to tell, if you know anything about Jewish culture, Jewish history, and you go and talk to your friend and say that a Jewish man was talking to a, a Samaritan woman, nobody would believe you. But this really, really happened. And not only that, Jesus actually talked to her. Jesus asked her for something, and she didn't say no. Jesus replied, um, um, in verse 9, The Samaritan woman said to him, oh, sorry, uh, Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. What is Jesus talking about? It's very simple. Jesus is talking about living water. And living water is a metaphor for eternal life. And this eternal life is actually, in Jesus' very own word, the gift of God. So this woman, if you can imagine, came to the well to draw water because she was thirsty, maybe even to give water to her family. But lo and behold, nothing is impossible with God. She got more than she bargained for because Jesus was there, sent by God, I believe, to give something more to this woman. Maybe some of you here, you come to church. I don't know what you expect, but I believe today God has a lot more to give you than what you came here for because nothing is impossible with God. Whatever you are going through right now, I don't know what it is. Whatever challenges that you are facing right now, I'm telling you, God has a gift that He wants to give to every single one of us. And the most amazing gift of all that Jesus has for us is the, this gift of living water. See, if you want to live in this world, you have to have water. You can't survive without water. If you, have, if you want eternal life, you've got to have this living water. And Jesus is using this living water as a metaphor for eternal life. In the book of King James, I mean, in, in the King James version of this verse, I love it. It says, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see, belly is your, 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 your inner being. Is that's, that's your core. See, even today, to have a strong core is highly, highly desirable, right? Sexy abs. So why don't right now you turn to your neighbor and show them your abs? No, don't do that. <laughs> but Jesus is saying, hey, you know, what I want to give you, what God wants to give you, and that's the reason why I'm here, Jesus said. What God wants to give you is not just something that is on the surface. See, anybody can give you that. At any time, you can draw water from this well. Anyone can give this to anyone. But what I can give you, only I can give you. Only my heavenly Father can give you. So, woman, you think you come here to draw water, but God has something a lot more than just water for you. God wants to give you a living water. God wants to give you eternal life. So, with her eternal life hanging in the balance, this woman said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, give me this living water. I, I need it so desperately in my life. I thought I'm a reject of the society. Nobody wants me. Nobody cares about me. They don't care if I'm alive or I'm dead. But you give me new hope. Give me this living water. So in verse 16, uh, Jesus said to her, Go, get your husband, Jesus told her. And then she replied, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the one you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth. So this Samaritan woman was convinced by this time, man, nobody knew this. This guy is a Jewish man. Jews don't talk to Samaritans. How does he know my story? The people in my town know everything about me. But this Jewish man, I've never seen him before. How could he know my story? He's got to be the Messiah. He's got to be who he says he is. Lord, I give my life to you. Give me this living water. So what happens next is really, really unbelievable. Nothing is impossible with God. Let me tell you, verse 28, the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone. She didn't walk. She ran. She couldn't wait to share what happened. She didn't even realize the disciples were not even talking to her. The disciples completely ignored 
her when they came back from buying lunch. And she didn't even bring the water jar. She left the water jar at the well. I love this. She came to the well with the water jar. She came home with the living water inside of her, with the Spirit of God inside of her. She came to the well with a jar. She came home bringing the whole well with her, not just any well, but well that springs forth living water. That's amazing. So the woman left the water jar beside the well, ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? You see, over the centuries, people have argued. People have argued and argued, especially Christians. If you're not a Christian, maybe you don't know this. But Christians have argued over the centuries, can a woman preach? Now, Jesus, this is like as blatant as anything. This is the very first sermon recorded about Jesus. Think about it. Before this point, nobody has ever preached about Jesus. But this Samaritan woman is the person chosen by God to speak about Jesus for the first time ever. Who is this woman? She's the reject of the society. She's on the wrong side of the community. She has the wrong theology. She has the wrong lifestyle. But yet, let me tell you, church, nothing is impossible with God. If God can use this Samaritan woman who is considered as the scum of the society at the time, God can certainly use you. And what she said was very simple. Come and see. She was not bashful about it. She was very intelligent about it. There's something about her, and that's probably why God chose her. She was not Bible bashing people. She simply said, come and see. Could this be the Messiah? See, she believed with all her heart, this is the Messiah. She couldn't wait. She ran. But instead of telling people, come, I met the Messiah. Instead, she just turned it into a question and said, could this man possibly be the Messiah? What do you think? And the whole town came to see Jesus. Remember, Jesus only asked her to do what? Go get your husband. Jesus asked her to just talk to one person. And while running, I, I imagine this in my head. I like to imagine things. While running back to her village, she said, I, I cannot just tell this to one person. I got to tell this to everybody. Uh, everybody needs to know about this guy who knew everything there is to know about me. But yet still, he accepts me as I am. He doesn't condemn me. He doesn't look at me funny with the look of disgust. But he just accepts me as I am. i got to tell the whole town about this man. So, again, the amazing thing happened. Nothing is impossible with God. Verse 39, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him, in Jesus, because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him, that, that means Jesus, to stay with them. And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Because of the teaching of Jesus and the love of Jesus, the whole town, many more, believe in Jesus. You know, nothing is impossible with God. I believe, you know, the people that came to see Jesus, uh, there were a lot of men and women, including some of her exes, right? I mean, like, she's been married five times. She's been divorced five times. Jesus, I want you to meet husband number one, husband number two. They don't get along. So, Jesus, if you could, you know, tell, talk to them about love your enemies thing, that would be really great. Um, husband number three, here he is, Jesus. You know, he's a mistake. You know, I don't know what I was doing, but here he is. Husband number four and five, they were out of town, Jesus. But trust me, I will definitely talk to them, tell them about you, and Jesus, here's number six. I know I'm not even married to him. I told him about that Bible verse, Jesus. If you want it, you have to put a ring on it, right? That book of First Beyonce chapter 1 is there. But uh, maybe you can talk to him, Jesus. You know, th this woman just talk and blab and just tell everybody, hey, and maybe, Jesus, what do you think? Maybe I can start a divorce recovery ministry or something like that. 
And Jesus probably smiled at him and said, hey, you can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God, right? Nothing is impossible with God. Some of you have been through stuff that you are not proud of. Some of you have been through things that are so difficult, you don't wish it on anyone. Some of you think that that's it. Your life is gone. There's no more hope for you. There's no more future for you. But let me tell you, God brought you to church today for a reason. It is not a coincidence. I believe God has a wonderful plan for your life because nothing is impossible with God. When you were created, you were created in God's image. You are not just here to take space. Let me tell you, God has a purpose for your life. For your life. Nothing is impossible with God. And people all throughout the centuries have been praying nothing is impossible with God kind of prayer all the time. Abraham said, could I have a child in my old age? I'm 99 years old. Nothing is impossible with God. Moses asked, is it possible that I can deliver the, all the Jewish nation from slavery in Egypt under the rulership of the mighty Pharaoh? Nothing is impossible with God. David asked the question, could I triumph over Goliath? Nothing is impossible with God. Daniel asked, could I be saved from the lion's den? Nothing is impossible with God. Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, could I be rescued from this fiery furnace because I refuse to bow down to the king, Nebuchadnezzar? Nothing is impossible with God. Mary asked the question, is it possible? I'm just a teenage virgin. How can I be the mother of God? Let me tell you. Nothing is impossible with God. People ask Jesus all the time, can you heal the sick? Can you forgive sinners? Nothing is impossible with God. Anything is possible. I want to encourage you this evening, as you go from this place, as you look forward to 2016, maybe you're not looking forward to 2016, but let me tell you, the fact that you are still breathing right now, the fact that you're still living right now, that means God still has a plan for you. In the words of our good friend Shirley, God is not finished with you yet. God has a special thing in store for you. And a powerful story that I came across recently is there's this porn star. Her name is Brittany Ruiz. That's her real name. She goes by a different name. And she's been in the porn industry since she was 18 years old. And every time there's a porn or sex convention in America, all over the world, there's this unique church that God has called, called the Triple X Church. I don't know if you've heard of it. But this church has a special mission. And the mission is to rescue people, to help people with porn addiction, people in the porn industry, just to be out there and to tell them that Jesus loves them. They even printed, you know, Bible with, this, with a special cover. The cover says, Jesus loves porn stars. Jesus loves porn stars. So there's this woman at this different convention that always talk to her. Uh, they talk about some girly stuff like, you know, your nails, talk about handbags and things like that. And she also accepts her as she is and then keep telling her about, you know, uh, what she can be, that she believes in her. And then until finally, she gave her life to Jesus. And I want you to hear this short one-minute testimony, just a clip uh, of her testimony. Let's watch this. You know, growing up, I grew up with the mentality of life sucks and then you die. I just thought, well, this is just life and this is the path I chose. But I got in the industry when I was 18 years old. I was being affirmed in that industry. I was being told everything I ever wanted to hear. You're beautiful. Everybody loves you. I started doing cocaine to lose weight, and I developed a really heavy drug addiction that remained with me through my seven years of being in the porn industry. 
When I was in the industry for about three years, I wanted to kill myself. And we're really good, we're actresses, so we can put a smile on our face and we can perform on camera and make you think that everything's okay. But what people didn't know about my alter ego, you know, my, my porn star character was that I was suicidal. I was depressed. I didn't want to be there on set that day, but I had to do it because I was out of drugs and my rent was due. When I left the industry, never did I think that I was going to go back into the limelight. I just thought I was going to be a receptionist for the rest of my life. And then God just starts opening up crazy doors. I went on ABC's The View and National Geographic Channel. Like, it's just, and I'm not even looking for it. You know, they find me. God opens those doors. And so God's really showing me that that's where he wants to take me to really spread his love, his grace, the power of his forgiveness with the world, not just with the church, with the world. You know, I know that he wants to use me to bring people that are in very dark places to him because they've been there. Nothing is impossible with God. God used a normal housewife by the name of Rachel, Rachel Collins. Speak to her, Brittany Ruiz. And her life got turned around. And God is using her right now to help a lot of people. Nothing is impossible with God. And here's how you can make it personal this weekend. Let me ask you again. What is your nothing is impossible with God prayer. What is your nothing is impossible with God prayer? You know, as a church, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us in 2016. Let me tell you, two weeks ago, I was just told by Pastor Mike that we needed an extra 300,000 um, for, you know, our church fund for paying the mortgage that we're going to have next year with the building that we have. And I don't know where the money is going to come from, but I'm believing nothing is impossible with God. If you have money that, you know, you want to give to God, maybe God is talking to you right now. Maybe you have money that you can lend to the church and the church can pay you interest. That's also another possibility. Nothing is impossible with God. I'm going to trust God that this is happening. It is possible, okay? And so my question to you again and again is, what is your nothing is impossible prayer? Maybe for you to be used by God in a fresh and powerful way, just like this woman was being used by God. Maybe it's to have strength to overcome a, a situation or an addiction in your life. Maybe it's to be given uh, just the power to accomplish what you believe God wants you to do. Maybe it is for a broken heart to be put back together. Maybe it is for a marriage to be put back together. Maybe it is for somebody you love who has been far away from God and you want this person to come back to God. Maybe it's for God to use you to touch part of the, the world that needed to be touched by Him. Let me tell you, nothing is impossible with God. So right now, what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to get Pastor Mike to come back up here. Oh, he's already over there. And he's going to sing a song for us. It's a very old song. If you're a Christian, you know this song. If you're not, maybe you don't know this song, but that's all right. It's a very easy song to sing. The song says that um, God will make a way when there's no way out, when you think that that's it, that's a dead end for me, but it's never a dead end with God because with God, nothing is impossible. Right now, I just want to invite all the prayer warriors who come up here to the front and just get ready to, to pray for people. If you have a nothing is impossible with God kind of prayer, I don't want you to walk alone. I want you to know that there are people here who genuinely, genuinely care about what's going on in your life. And we want to believe together with you. We want to believe together to God with you that nothing is impossible with God. If you are sick, if you need healing in your body, or you know someone who is sick that needs prayer, come forward. We want to pray for you. If you have financial issue, 
if you have relationship issue, maybe you just want to be set free from addiction or whatever it is, nothing is impossible with God. And before we go, I just want to let you know as well that, you know, like the Samaritan woman who has experienced the love and the forgiveness and the grace of God, she thought, what is the worst that can happen? People already rejected me. I might as well tell them about Jesus. I want you to make use of this Christmas season to tell your friends about Jesus. What's the worst that can happen? Come on. They say no to your invitation. You're not going to die. So why don't you just hand out the invitation that we have. Call someone you haven't spoken to in a while. Or just simply ask your neighbors, your parents, your co-workers, hey, would you like to spend Christmas with me at church this Christmas day on the 25th? You never know. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Why don't we bow our heads and we pray together. And if you want to be prayed for, please come forward to the front. We would love to pray for you. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you, Lord, for what we have heard today. Thank you that with you, nothing is it possible? God, you are the God of the possible. Lord, we as Christians, as your followers, we are the proof of that. Lord, we were once broken and wounded and lost in our sins. But Lord, you did not consider our iniquities as something that, that, that to be afraid of. Instead, you chose to come down from the glorious heaven to be like one of us. You took on the form of a servant to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven. We are here not because we are good, not because we are powerful, not because we never do anything wrong, but we are here simply because we have been forgiven by you. Thank you so much, Lord God. And we know this grace, this love, this forgiveness, we cannot keep it to ourselves, Lord. We just need to tell it to everyone. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. And I pray this Christmas season, you will give us the courage, Lord, to do uh, what is considered by many maybe to be impossible. Lord God, we want to invite our friends and families to come to church. Lord, we want them, just like this Samaritan woman, we want them to know Jesus. We want them to find eternal life. We want them to find healing, restoration, forgiveness that can only be found in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to pray right now for everybody here in this room. Lord, we know we're not here by coincidence. Father, I want to pray for every single person standing here right now. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, Father, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus, Lord, that you help them, that you deliver them, that you provide them with answer to their prayer much more than what they could ask or imagine. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for answered prayer because we know there's nothing in this world that you would rather do. If it's important to us, it is important to you. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. But help us to get ready as well for a different kind of answer to our prayer because you, as our good Heavenly Father, you know what is best for us. You know what is good for us. So thank you so much, Lord Jesus. So church, it is a custom in our church to open our hands as we receive the prayer of blessing. It's nothing magical, but this is just a posture of surrender to our God. Father in heaven, you see all these open hands before you. I pray right now that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always wherever you go. May God bless you through and through. May God bless your family. May God bless your work, your business, everything that you do, so that through you, people will be blessed. For now, until Christ comes again, even forevermore. And all God's people who are blessed, say it together with me. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Go for home right away. We have next uh, at the cafeteria behind us. And if you need the prayer, please come forward. We'd love to pray for you. God bless you.